Okay, we've got a uh, cheap IR720 filter here from eBay, uh, $13. I don't see much difference uh, to using the expensive ones. You, once you've got it on your camera, you want to find your uh, white balance and set it to custom white balance. Generally, you'll want to um, set your Kelvin to around the roughly the lowest, 2100, 2150. Basically, you want a lot of blue in the image. Something like 2150 is what I generally use. When you are out in the field taking these shots, uh, the one thing you really need with infrared is a lot of sunlight. So you're really going to want to be out there during midday sun. You don't want to be out there during the golden hour. For editing, the software I use is GIMP. Uh, I know a lot of people use Photoshop and and probably a lot of people want to know how to do this in Photoshop. I don't have Photoshop. Uh, this is how you do it in GIMP. Most of the time I'm using a uh, kit zoom lens just because it has no IR hotspots. I, use, I like to use it wide and you get a bit of barrel distortion and uh, a bit of perspective distortion. So here I'm just correcting the perspective distortion in GIMP. Uh, just personal preference I like to see the vertical lines nice and straight I don't really want to see uh, the picture curving one way or the other it might look a little bit slow and jerky on the screen here it's um, basically because the the screen recorder slows the computer down quite a bit while uh, recording this so once I've got it uh, straightened out I duplicate the layer. I like to duplicate layers just because it's easy to go back if you um, make a mistake or just to see what you've done. First thing, auto white balance. I do that before I swap any channels or do anything. It does a pretty good job uh, on most images. Sometimes it doesn't work. Then I use the channel mixer which is the, uh, the important part. You want to swap your reds and blues. So you go to your red output channel turn the red to zero and bump your blue up to a hundred then you go to your blue channel turn the blue off down to zero and switch your red up to a hundred percent now that's a that's a pretty default setting uh, you can go with that uh, you can save it I normally save this as a preset uh, I do have presets but I was just showing you guys how to make it now so um, you could open that preset uh, on GIMP, if you uh, expand this window, uh, it just makes it a little easier to see the adjustments you're making with the red and the blue. So you can move these sliders up and down. Just generally, you, you, generally there's a bit much red, and so I like to take uh, red out of the image, maybe a little bit more blue. Uh, it's personal taste. With, uh, with the green, uh, which we'll get to in a second there, you don't really want to do much. If you add more green it does look better but it tends to blow your image out. Too little green and it, you tend to get a bit of red coming in so I don't alter the green too much. Okay so it still looks uh, a little bit red overall but we'll adjust that later on. Auto equalize is something that works on some images and it doesn't work on others here. I think it blows it out a little bit. So I'm just adjusting the opacity of that layer to to only have a, a little bit of auto equalize in there. So I don't know, around 50% looks to me about right. Uh, I always like making new layers after I do things again, just to go back and check. Uh, and then f you can adjust your curves. Uh, I'm just bumping down the overall darker channels just to um, just to bring out a bit of contrast and not bringing the lights up too much and again you go through your uh, your reds blues and greens and adjust the curves this is all just suck and see just uh, just trying it out what looks pleasing to your eye um, with these curves there's no real magic solution every image looks different and it also depends on how you white balanced it. So basically just moving these around to see what sort of pleases the eye at the time. 
I generally always start with the uh, the red and then I go for the blue and uh, and finally the green again the green's the one you don't you don't want to do too much green because you you're just going to you're really going to blow it out if you put too much green in there but uh, I guess the one thing to think about with the green is it's really going to affect your whites so if you want a really nice white you've got to get the get the green channel right Yeah, I, th I think you can see how the image changes pretty drastically. And then finally, not everyone has this plug-in here, FX Foundry. It's got a um, local contrast enhancement, which um, is the same on Lightroom's Clarity slider. It pretty much does the same thing. And uh, I use a setting of 12 or 14. I'm using 14 here. And it just bumps up the clarity also you can adjust the opacity on this if you think you've overdone it or you can either undo it and maybe do a lesser number so here I've just adjusted the opacity back a little to 74% uh, which to me looks about right the final image here looks slightly different I played with it a bit more a bit more red um, but just here's a comparison with the uh, with the original uncorrected image which most of your infrareds look pretty purpley, reddy colours. So yeah, a bit of a before and an after. Alright, thanks for watching.